Hello everyone, welcome to What If Issei Was Betrayed and Got Demon King's Powers to Take Revenge Movie. Before we start please go support Angel Gonzalez 753 for writing that awesome fanfic. This is the translated version I made, there will be some wrong he or she calling here because it's translated so let me clear this essay is a male in this story. Suffering. Everything was peace and normality between the factions since five months ago, the war between the Alliance and the Cows Brigade had taken place with a victory for the Alliance, in addition to the resealing of the Trahixa and the death of Rizavum Lucifer. Guo City, Academy. The group of boys walked through the halls of the Academy while talking about the latest events they had experienced. Angel. And tell me, Issei, how have you been with your girls lately, said a brown-haired boy with brown eyes in a mischievous manner. Issei. Well, I guess I really don't know what's going on. Riaz is still just as affectionate and happy with me, but the others have become distant and cold, but tell me how it's going with Akeno he said sadly but with a little encouragement. Angel. I'm not complaining, she's very affectionate, although sometimes she tries to grape me he said with a slight blush. Issei. You know she is like that, don't worry, although I still don't believe that she would fall in love with you he said mockingly. Angel. Well I still don't know what I did to make you notice me and why you didn't kill me for taking her away from you, he said embarrassed. Issei. We didn't talk about it at all and I wasn't going to force her to be with me and I'm glad you can make her happy, he said with a calm smile. Angel. You are a great friend, Issei, really they said happily. At that moment the two entered the occult club where they could see Rias and Akeno sitting on the armchairs, but the strange thing was that they were in a deathly silence, and when they entered they both looked at them, but the strange thing was their eyes that had no emotion whatsoever. They say. Rias are you okay, something is wrong he said worried. At that moment a sword was about to cut Issei, but he was saved by Angel who pulled him to the side, but the impressive thing was to see Kiba behind them. They say. What the hell are you doing Kiba? Said the furious brown haired boy. Kiba. I'll just get rid of the trash he said with a crazy smile. They say. You will pay for this he said trying to activate his booster gear, but it didn't work. Kiba. You can't summon her, how sad said the little prince mockingly. They say. Drag what's wrong he said worried. Drag. Silence brat, the time has finally come for me to be free from being with a disgusting pervert like you said the dragon with disgust. They say. What are you talking about? He said in shock. Drag. You don't understand, stupid, you disgust me so much, you denigrated my title as a celestial dragon, you turned me into a joke he said furiously. At that moment several magic circles appeared from which Bali's team, the rest of the Gremory clan and the faction leaders emerged. Serzich. Wow, I thought you were already done, Kiba said the Mai with disgust. Kiba. Sorry, things got a little complicated he said calmly. Bali. It doesn't matter since they won't last long he said taking out his wings, while the XSA girls stood by his side. Angel. I don't think so he said taking a sphere out of his hand and throwing it against the ground. So a thick curtain of smoke if I cut smoke if I cut cutting everyone. Odin. Damn, catch them, said the Asgardian annoyed. Well with the boys. Both ran desperately through the school in search of the exit. Angel. Issei please we must escape he said worried. Issei. Because what did I do to deserve this he said sadly. Angel. Issei be careful he said throwing Issei against a wall while he was pierced by Zenobia's sword. Issei. Ah Angel said in shock. Angel. I say are on a way po dot dot please ah dot dot save your life and thank you for being my friend, he said with a calm smile. Issei at that moment began to run desperately while crying. Greg. As stupid as ever, brat, they will always find me thanks to me, he said amused. At that moment Bali appeared in front of Issei and slammed into the ground. Bali. You know something, I never liked you as a rival, you're so pathetic, but don't worry, when you die I'll take care of your girls, especially the Grimmery hitch he said emotionlessly, piercing the brown-haired boy's abdomen. They say. I hope you rot in hell, there is forgiveness, you can't, poor child without love and don't worry, I'll give your regards to your grandfather he said with a smile, while Azazel approached with a strange device with which they began to extract his sacred gear. Azazel. That's it. Now what do we do with him? He said coldly. Michael. Throw it over there next to your pathetic friend said without importance. At that moment the Kiba took Issei's body, and together with Bhikkhu who was carrying Angel, they reached the furthest place in the Kuo forest, where they threw them without importance. Issei. Bad damn they will regret this he said furiously. At that moment Haidu Issei's life came to an end. Unknown location. They will be perfect said a rather deep voice. Issei, our good brown haired friend, slowly opened his eyes, noticing that he was in a rather strange place. Issei. What what is this place where he didn't continue because he saw that Angel was a few meters away Angel Angel are you okay? He said running desperately. Angel. 
What would happen to me where I am I say he said confused as he woke up. I say. You idiot, you don't know how much I worried about you, said the brown haired boy hugging his friend. Angel. I'm sorry but this moment is not the claim that we are not dead he said confused. I say. You were, or rather we are he said, equally confused. Angel. So if you don't know this place, it's not the underworld you know, so where are we? He said, checking the place. Before the chestnut could respond, someone else got there first. This is purgatory said a thick and terrifying voice. They both looked in the direction where the voice came from without finding anything. They say. Who are you? He said a little upset. I am the demon king said a strange being of gigantic size. Demon king. Welcome. A new path. Our favorite brown haired boy and his friend were standing in front of a colossal being who called himself the demon king. They say. What do you mean by demon king? He said confused. R.D. Very easy, Brad. Do you really think that the beings you know are authentic demons? Well, let me tell you that they are not he said with disgust. Dot. Angel. So if you are a real demon, why have you never let yourself be seen in the human world? The boy asks seriously. R.D. You could say that I and my race, the original demons, are locked here in purgatory he said seriously and annoyed. I say. But how come there are two types of demons he said still confused. R.D. I'll tell you, but first we're going to my castle he said seriously as the three of them disappeared from the place. Already in the castle. A say and angel appeared in front of a throne, and sitting on it was a blonde man with green eyes. A say. Who are you he said alert. R.D. Brat, I'm the demon king he said somewhat calmly. A say. I see, he uses this form to be able to be in small places, right? He said curiously. R.D. Indeed well now in what we were more than 100,000 years ago before the age of myth, there were five races in the world, humans, giants, fairies. Demons and goddesses for centuries these races lived in peace and harmony, save two the goddesses and us because there were wars, but one occasion a huge war broke out because the goddesses joined the other races to exterminate us after a monumental massacre, the races of the giants and the fairies were exterminated, we were sealed eternally, and the goddesses left a single survivor called Ki also. That human survived the war, but their race was reduced in number the king finished telling seriously. Angel. So how come the demons we know and the other races exist he said curiously. R.D. Key the survivor of the goddesses, then proclaimed himself a biblical god and created the new servants the angels, but in a madness, he mixed the power of an original demon with one of his servants called Lucifer, that was a failure, since it gave rise to a new race the demons, and to avoid chaos, he put a security system, if an angel sinned his wings would lose their color, and jack the fallen were. Born the rest of the factions were locked in their own dimensions he said a little relaxed. I say. And what about the dragons he said a little surprised. R.D. They are all creations of God, he created them, even the dragon gods, only he used things that he could not control, such as darkness, sleep and emptiness, that is why the three of them are more powerful than he was when he was alive, he said without importance, surprised the boys. I say. I see then why you brought us here he said intrigued. R.D. Easy, I want you to be the key to free my race. You have a noble and pure heart that was trampled, now you deserve your revenge he said with an evil smile, while two balls of darkness appeared in front of the boys. Dot. I say. What happens if we don't accept he said seriously. R.D. A. Not long, their souls will continue their path to the world of the dead, and by the way, I don't know what their girls told them, the redeed and the half-fallen one didn't betray them, they were controlled by the Mao Lucifer he said with a smile, while the boys opened their eyes in surprise, remembering the looks of the girls. Without thinking, they both took the spheres that began to shine. The say angel ah both boys let out a heart-rending scream as their bodies began to change. R.D. How do you feel? He said with a victorious smile. Angel. I feel amazing said the now black-haired boy with red eyes. I say. I feel like an enormous power runs through my body, said the one now with long white hair and blue eyes. R.D. Now they are authentic demons, and I grant each one a blessing he said more than satisfied. I say. And what is that blessing he said curiously. R.D. They are two unique abilities, angel, yours is love, anyone who feels hate will not be able to move in your presence, and yours, is say, is mercy, anyone who betrays you or attacks you in a cowardly manner, will become your slave permanently, he said with a deranged smile. I say. With this power the factions will fall he said sadistically. R.D. There is one more thing he said seriously. Angel. What is it? He asked curiously. R.D. They will become my daughter's fiancés he said calmly. After saying that, two she devils literally entered the place, one blue-haired and one green-haired. R.D. 
These are my daughter's knee socks and scanty girls, they are a say an angel, their husbands he said seriously. Scanty. Wow, they're cute, although you're more handsome, said the green-haired girl looking at Issei. Knee socks. You've already chosen, it seems fine to me, you'll be my husband, said the blue-haired girl looking at Angel. RD. Don't worry, you can have more wives, but the first ones you have to marry are my daughters, you understand, otherwise I will castrate you, he said quite seriously. Issei Angel sir yes sir they answered in unison very scared. Two months later. Underworld. In the Gremory Castle a meeting of factions was taking place due to a great threat, but let's not recap how we got here. To begin the leaders gave the news that Issei had died by a very strong renegade demon, and how he asked Drake to look for a new carrier who was Dulio, but after this the cow's brigade reappeared, and without the Sekar Yute no one would stop them, this did not scare the leaders much since Dulio was more powerful than Issei, but in an attack Cow Cow swept the floor with Dulio. Bali Sarayard noted he did not betray him Saji this one did betray him, but the Sitri clan did not in Bikku as if nothing happened, leaving the leaders terrified. Now yes in the meeting. Serzich. What was the last thing that happened he said worried. Seraphol. An attack took place on Olympus where Ares betrayed his father and almost killed Artemis and Apollo she said worriedly. Odin. Well, we still agree that killing the boy was the best thing to do said the Nordic with annoyance in his voice as he understood that he was wrong. Shiva. Odin please I didn't continue because Odin interrupted him. Odin. Enough Shiva damn you for listening to a brad asshole as the kid Lucifer, the cow's brigade is stronger than ever and no one is standing up to them, even Yasaka found out that we used one of Lucifer's servants to disguise herself as her, so that the boy would see that the Yakai also hated him and that we won that the Yakai will leave the alliance he said, annoyed leaving the place. Sir Awful. He's right, we were wrong, even Sona hasn't spoken to me since she found out the truth, and now she's in the human world taking care of Rias and Akeno after this she said, starting to cry. Azazel. What's done is done, we must find a way to end the cow's brigade he said seriously. Michael. It's easy for you, with his say out of the way, you can buck the bucking Valkyrie and the hitch Penemu said the angel with disgust. While on the outskirts of Lilith. A strange portal opened, revealing eight silhouettes. They say. The underworld, what memories, it's a shame that it won't take long to fall, he said seriously. Angel. The plan to subdue the factions is ready, said the black-haired man calmly. Issei. The time for revenge has come. Reunion. Location underworld. Issei. The time has come, let's go, he said, disappearing from the place along with the other seven people. But the leaders. Michael. We have a new problem, he said frustrated. Shiva. What's happening now? He said with annoyance. Michael. We have received reports of unknown energy in the human world he said worried. Zeus. And that tells us that he said without understanding. Michael. That energy was felt during the age of myth and that caused great problems to the biblical factions he said coldly, while well, Sirs shuddered next to Azazel. Azazel. You you mean you mean he said terrified. Michael. That's what Atlantis is like he said dryly. Sirs That's impo. He couldn't continue because there was a big explosion. Ooh um. After the explosion, a smokescreen was created that gradually faded away, revealing eight people. Two young men and six girls. Shiva who the hell are you? He said angrily. Angel. Down he said without further ado. Without understanding, the leaders were slammed into the ground. Serzich. What what is what is going on he spoke with difficulty. Issei. What's wrong, you demon, it's hard for you to get up. Said the white-haired man calmly. Shiva. Ma da da damn brat who who do you think you are said the Indian, boiling with anger. Angel. Wow, I surprise myself, who would have thought that I could put the god of destruction at my feet, said the black-haired man with a calm smile. Zeus. Who who are are they what do they want said the Olympian worried. Issei. Oh, it's only been a month and they've already forgotten about me said the boy pretending to be sad. Azazel. What day what the hell are you talking about? No we don't we don't know you said the fallen one, annoyed dot. Issei. Ah please, you are idiots, I told you a month ago who you killed a month ago, he said annoyed. Michael Lim impossible essay he said in shock like the rest. Angel. And we have a winner, a round of applause he said with irony. Seraphil you your voice is you are his friend eh Angel she said surprised. Essay. Wow, you used your brain and tell me it didn't hurt you he said mockingly. Serzich is essay boo, but how is it that you're vi? Alive he said incredulously. Essay. That doesn't matter to you, Mao. I just came here to tell you something very peculiar he said with amusement. Azazel. And what the hell is it he said angrily. Issei. His death is near he said seriously as they disappeared from the place. Human world hide your residence. 
At the residence we could see the Citri entourage consoling a Reed and a black-haired girl who looked emaciated and had a lost look on their faces. So Naria's please eat something you'll feel sick, said the black-haired girl sadly. Tsubaki. I know it's hard, but you have to lift your spirits and do it for them, she said with deep sadness. Rias. How do they say that when Dot could not continue because someone arrived? Ali. They keep complaining about that loser, said the albino with disgust while appearing with a brown-haired ex-harem. Sona. What are you doing here, Lucifer? Get out of here, said the black-haired girl annoyed. Saji. Come on, Kaicho, you know you have to be with real men, he said with pride. Tsubaki. Shut up, trash, who do you think you are to say it when I'm going to sweep the floor with you? He said mockingly, bothering those present. Diba. Look, you hitch he couldn't continue because something slammed him against the floor while stepping on his head. Angel. Hey, you moron, you weren't taught to respect a lady he said calmly, making those present blush at his beauty, as did a white-haired man standing to the side. Ali. Damn you like you I didn't continue because a force took him to the ground just like the rest. Arena. What what's going on? said the angel without understanding what happened. They say. I'm going to change into this idiot, they are such bores, said the white-haired man with disgust. Hineko. What the hell are you talking about? We don't know you, said the Nekamata. They say. No, really, you damn piece of shit cat, you forget how I helped you accept your damn cat side, he said full of anger, leaving everyone cold. Hineko. It's him impossible, the one who did that was Issei, she said, leaving everyone even more surprised. Issei. What's wrong? It seems like you saw a ghost, he said mockingly. Zenovia. Impossible, you're dead, she said incredulously. Angel. You think so because we are alive and more so after having run me through with a sword or did you forget? He said seriously while the blue-haired girl's eyes opened wide. Zenovia. No, it's not possible, she said terrified. Angel. Issei I can, he said amused as he approached the blue-haired girl. Issei. No problem, he said without interest as everyone looked at him. Angel. Perfect rebellion he said taking out his sword that was divided into seven. So he began to stab the swords, one in each arm and leg, one in his belly and one in his chest. Hiba. Ma dot dot damn you stop he said desperately. Angel. Goodbye hitch he said, piercing his head with the last sword. Ali. I will kill you, I swear I will kill you he said full of anger. They say. We'll really see when the time comes he said, disappearing from the place with the Citri entourage and the two grimmeries, leaving a dead blue haired girl. Unknown location. We can see how Issei and Angel appeared with their companions in front of the six girls with whom they appeared in the underworld. Rias. You really are Issei my Issei she said, starting to shed tears just like a Keno. At that moment both of them glowed, returning to their former form. The Keno. And dot dot Angel you are alive she said running to him and hugging him tightly while crying loudly. Angel. Yeah, calm down, don't cry anymore, we're together, and nothing will separate us he said, reciprocating the hug and trying to calm the brunette. Issei. I'm so happy to see you again he said calmly hugging the redeed who didn't take a second to reciprocate the hug tightly. Sona. I say how are you alive she said incredulously. Issei. It's a long story, don't worry, we have plenty of time to tell it he said relaxed. Before continuing, a strange being in red armor and a purple-haired girl floating with a strange mist around her, fell in front of them. Tsubaki. And who are they? She said intrigued. Issei. Ah, they are my parents. The truth. Issei. They are my parents he said without further ado, leaving everyone in shock. All. What they said, pale at the news. Rias. Issei, but if your parents couldn't continue because Issei spoke. Issei. My parents disappeared three days after my death like an angel, and since that day their whereabouts were unknown, he said without further ado, surprising the girls even more. Rias. Yes, yes, how do you know? She said incredulously. Issei. Let's go inside, but I present to you my servants, they are. Solution Epsilon a blonde girl in a black maid outfit. Opus Regina Beta red-haired maid with feline aspects. Antoma Vasilisa Zada an insect-like maid. The three of them bowed to those present. Angel. I think it's my turn, they are. Yuri Alpha the maid who seemed the oldest of all with glasses and spiked bracelets. Narbal Gamma a blue-haired maid with a spear and a serious look. CZ2128 Delta A pink-haired lowly with a gun. Like the others, they bowed. They say. Well, introductions made, let's go inside he said, while a thick curtain of smoke formed behind revealing a rather imposing mansion. Upon entering, everyone was amazed by how luxurious it was, but they found a blonde woman without clothes, but most of her body was covered by dark matter, and a brown-haired man without a shirt and green pants, but his chest also had dark matter. Angel. Hello dad, hello mom said the boy greeting the two beings. They say. 
Take a seat, I'll tell you. He couldn't finish because the two she devils appeared. Knee socks. My love, you've arrived, said the blue haired girl kissing Angel, making Akeno jealous. Scanty. I say, honey, did you have fun? said the green haired girl very affectionately, making the red haired girl boil with anger. There he is. I say, could you explain to me? He said, expelling his power of destruction and had a macabre smile. I say, See she is my fiancé like the blue haired girl is angels, but everything has an explanation just let us explain he said trembling like a chicken because of the redeeds killer instinct. So Naria's calm down, let's let him explain she said seriously, but inside she was furious. I say. Well let's start when we were killed by the leaders, and thus he began to tell how they appeared in purgatory and met the demon king, and he told them everything about the ancient races and from these the three biblical factions and the dragons originated, in addition to the proposal to join him, and they accepted after finding out that they did not betray them, and finally how they were engaged to the daughters of the demon king. They were all more than surprised since everything they believed was a lie, and not only that, but the beings they believed to be powerful were simple ants, compared to the original demons. Angel. Then we looked for our parents and told them what happened, and they accepted becoming real demons he said calmly. Note. I will use the names of the commandments. Alan. That's right Ria's Chan, after finding out what happened we felt so much hatred for those hitches who lived in our home, said the one in the armor with disgust in his voice. Melascula. Honey, keep calm, if you want said the purple-haired girl calmly while drinking tea. Mons beat. It was also weird to find out that your son's girlfriend is a fallen angel, but I'm glad that someone like you truly loves him, said the relaxed man making the girl blush. Angel. Well, well, changing the subject, Mrs. Haidu, you got what I ask of you, he said blushing. Melascula. Yes, it's ready, if you want I'll bring it he said calmly. Angel. Of course he said happily. A few minutes later. Angel. Akeno, I prepared this for you after you told me what you went through, and after so much suffering I wanted to cheer you up, said the boy sadly. Akeno. But more joy than knowing that the man I love is alive, said the girl with tears. Angel. I just hope you like it, he said happily. At that moment a woman with a ponytail entered the room. Akeno. Ma dot dot mama said the girl in shock seeing her beloved mother after so many years. Shuri. My little one, how much you have grown, said the woman beginning to shed tears. Without thinking twice, Akeno ran to her mother, clinging to her chest, releasing all the pain she had kept for so many years, while everyone watched the emotional scene with a smile, saving Ria's who was shedding tears, since she knew the pain the brunette was in. Hours later. Location purgatory. We see a blue-haired girl walking scared because she didn't know where she was. Zenovia. Where am I? What is this place? Is there someone here? She said upset and nervous. Angel. You're having fun he said mockingly. Zenovia. You damn it she said trying to summon her sword. Angel. Don't even try it and it won't work he said without flinching. Zenovia. Damn where we are, this place is she said annoyed. Angel. Purgatory is a very nice place and since you love being a slut bucking everywhere you will like this, he said smiling revealing a group of ogres. Zenovia. What are you going to do? Don't move away from him she said terrified as she tried to get out of his grip. So the ogres tore off her clothes and began to brutally grape her. Angel. Have fun he said, disappearing from the place where only the screams and moans of horror of the blue-haired girl could be heard. Location Asgard. Auden. They are saying that the Brad and his friend are alive and killed the bearer of Durandal he said amused to the rest of the leaders. Serzich. That's right, in fact they have an ability that immobilizes the opponent he said scared. Azazel. They are a danger, we must put them as the most wanted criminals he said annoyed. Auden. Ha 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 are you really going to say that the number one hero of the factions is alive and that he is a criminal and what happens if he appears and shows the truth that we killed him? Ha 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 good luck he said amused while the leaders are worried. Michael. And what do you propose we do? He said nervously. Auden. Facing our guilt. Dot. Location mansion. There he is. Issei, it's very early what's happening she said tired like the rest. Issei. The time has come he said animatedly. The Keno. What are you talking about? she said sleepily. Angel. From training he said calmly. It's on a train for that she said confused. They say to become original demons. Demonic supremacy. There he is. With turning us into original demons the redeed said incredulously. They say. That's when your body reaches a certain level to withstand the power he said happily. Angel. Don't worry, his physical appearance won't change, but his power could increase in an excessive way that could surpass the level of a Mao he said relaxed. It's on to being stronger than a Mao. Kyoto, Japan. We see the leaders kneeling before Yasaka. Yasaka. Let me see if I understood Issei and his friend are alive she said happily. 
Michael. That's right Yusaka and his appearance and power have changed he said worriedly. Azazel. Besides, they are a danger and we must stop them he said angrily. Yusaka. Ha 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 and what makes you think that I will help you after what you did she said mockingly. Serzich. I know and you don't know how much I regret what we did to you, but this is critical he said nervously. Yusaka. Ha, well I'm sorry I won't help him because of him. Kuno hasn't stopped crying for the death of the man he loves she said annoyed. Azazel. You will regret it, they will destroy your entire faction he said annoyed, disappearing from the place along with the other two. Isaka. I must warn Kuno. One month later. Things were relatively calm with the boys, but the factions continued with their problems with Atlantis and the Cow's Brigade, as well as keeping an eye out for the boys. Issei. How do you feel girls? He said looking at Sona's entourage and the Gremory who had new outfits. Rias. Incredible, I can't believe he has so much power said the Redeed with emotion. The Keno. I want to kill those hitches, said the black-haired girl in a lustful tone. Issei. Everything in its time, well currently Rias, Akeno, Sona and Tsubaki, surpass the level of Michael who is the strongest biblical leader, and the others are stronger than Serzich, the truth is they surprised me he said happily. Sona. Issei, what are we waiting for to attack? She said thoughtfully. Angel. We must act wisely. First we must see how things are going in their current battles he said seriously. Issei. It's not entirely true, well we have to act to find the seven pieces to free the original demons he said thoughtfully. Tsubaki. Where are the pieces? She said doubtfully. Angel. They are hidden in all the kingdoms since Lave was in charge of disguising them as rare objects, but before looking for them, we must move our pieces strategically he said thoughtfully. Issei. What do you have in mind? He said curiously. Angel. Look, we create different distractions, and when that happens we will look for the pieces. We must act quickly without any margin for error he said seriously. Issei. Sounds good, first we have to see who will create a distraction and who will search. Sona. Easy, the strongest ones create the distraction, and the rest of us look for them. We should be teams of four, the distractor and three seekers Sitri said seriously. Issei. Fine, but we should test the plan with a faction, but which one he said thoughtfully. All. Dot the fallen they said in unison. Angel. Well, who will go? He said doubtfully. Balant. Oh what are you kids planning said the curious man with amusement. Say, Well dad we are planning to get the pieces of the seal he said calmly. Valent. Sounds interesting, I can help he said maliciously. Say, of course. Grigori. Everything was quiet at the main base of the Fallen when something fell in front of the entrance, creating a commotion. Fallen 1. Who are you? Leave now or you will suffer the consequences he said creating a spear of light. Valent force me he said mockingly. The Fallen One without hesitation launched his attack, while other Fallen Ones appeared next to the Fallen One including the Penemu herself. Penemu? What is happening he said it would be. Fallen One. Nothing, Miss Penemu, an idiot who doesn't know anything couldn't continue because someone spoke. Alan. Who are you calling a stupid piece of trash? He said, appearing behind him and then running him through with his weapon. Penemu? Damn you, attack me she said furiously. All the fallen launched themselves into the attack, but Galen did not seem to care, but began to move while slaughtering the fallen. Galen. It's the best they can do, they're just trash he said mockingly. Enemu just watched in horror as the fallen were slaughtered. Azazel. Damn you, who are you? Said the fallen one furiously. Galen. Oh the pathetic crow has arrived, my name is Galen, his executioner he said seriously appearing in front of him, hitting him. Enemu? What do you want? She said scared. Galen. Tell me something because you betrayed a say hi do he said seriously. Enemu? Because you want to know she said nervously. Alan. Answer the question he said annoyed. Enemu? Boo well because because Azazel forced me, I didn't know he couldn't continue because he started to turn into stone. Alan. Lie he said without further ado seeing the petrification of the fall. Azazel. Damn you he said furiously. Alan. Silence he said throwing his weapon hitting the fallen man's intimate area. Azazel. Ah damn it he said in shock. Alan. Haha, what would you do now that you're no longer a man? He said mockingly. Inside the Grigori. All that could be seen was a bloodbath with the torn apart bodies of the fallen. The Keno. So here is the divine dagger she said, looking at the artifact that supposedly took Jesus's life. Tsubaki. It wasn't that difficult she said bored. Erekiel. Stop, who are you? He said seriously. The Keno. It's been a while, dad she said coldly. Erekiel. Akeno, you are my little one he couldn't continue because a sword pierced him. Shuri. It's been a while, honey. Kyoto, Japan. Isaka. 
Who are you said seeing a brown haired boy with a mask? Angel. Nice to meet you, Yakai leader. We haven't had the pleasure of meeting you in person, but my name is Angel, Issei's friend he said, removing his mask, making the Yakai blush at his beauty. Isaka. A pleasure what do you want she said nervously. Angel. Talking about some matters. Underworld. The Gremory castle was filled with bodies torn to pieces, while Issei was in his original form facing Venelana and Grafia. Venelana. Issei, it's really you she said with tears. Issei. That's right, that's me he said with a smile. Grafia. Where have you been? She said happily. Issei. I'll tell you that later, but I have to do something he said seriously. Venelana. What a thing she said doubtfully. Issei. Take the. Superiority over factions. Arachiel. Shu Shuri you are alive he said in disbelief upon seeing his deceased wife. Shuri. You should see your face, it's worth millions she said amused. Akeno. Come on mom, it's time to go. I want to have some fun she said while licking the comb off her fingers. Arachiel. So what Azazel told me was true, that damn snotty couldn't continue because Shuri electrocuted him. Shuri. Don't insult a real trash man she said seriously. Arachiel. What what are you talking about? He said in shock. Shuri. How can I tell you, he makes me feel like a woman, something you never could she said mockingly, disappearing from the place with the girls. Kyoto, Japan. Isaka. So what I know about the biblical factions is a fraud she said amusedly. Angel. That's right, and from what I see, Miss Kuno has already heard everything, including the fact that my friend Issei is alive he said calmly, looking to one side of the room. Kuno. It's true sniff my Issei is not dead sniff he said shedding tears. Angel. I give you my word he said bowing. Isaka. And from what I see, you and I have an agreement, right? She said in a flirtatious way. Angel of course. Underworld Gremory Castle. Serzich. No no this can't be he said devastated seeing his home destroyed. Zudicus. Who could have done this? He said in shock. Soldier. My lord, your son's room is intact, said one of the few soldiers left. So both three deeds headed towards the place. Serzich. Milik as you are here he said desperately. When I saw the room everything was in order, but on a table there was a queen piece and written on the wall in blood it said. You betrayed the wrong person, your torment begins here and will not end until your soul suffers eternally in the depths of purgatory. Attendant. Issei Haidu. Zudicus. You said nothing would happen, you said everything would be fine, and now look around you, it's a disaster, and not just in our home. The factions are in chaos and we don't have a hero to save us, because stupid leaders and morons like me, agreed to turn our backs on the only being who could protect us. He said, completely furious. Serzich. Dad, I know, I don't know he couldn't continue because a magic circle appeared in his ear. Zudicus. What is happening now? He said with displeasure. Serzich. Grigori's main base was attacked and everyone died, only Barakiel and Azazel remained, but both are very serious he said worriedly. Mansion. Issei. Tell me they got it he said looking at the Himajimas. The Keno. Of course here it is she said showing the dagger. Angel. Those are my girls, said the black-haired man kissing the three black-haired girls. Alan. I must admit it was fun watching them fall apart he said happily. Malascula. Oh honey, since you became a demon you became more sadistic she said heavily. Angel. Issei someone wants to see you he said moving to one side. At that moment a very famous yakai ran to hug Issei. Who know? Issei Issei, you're really here, you're alive he said, starting to cry. Issei. If Kuno is me, don't cry anymore he said with affection. At that moment Riaz entered with Venelana, Grafia and Milikas. Riaz. I just told them everything, Issei, and they agree to be on our side, but with one condition she said relaxed. Issei. And what is it he said curiously. Grafia Venelana. To be your women they said in unison, blushing. Issei. Boo dot dot well I feel honored, but what do you think about this Milikas said the boy seriously looking at the redeed. Milikas. Boo dot dot well all this is very sudden and all but for a while now I stopped seeing you as an older brother and started seeing you as a father he said nervously. Issei Milikas but what's going on with Serzich he said surprised. Milikas. Issei my father was a complete loser and watching you fight in every battle fascinated me, please Issei be my dad he said in a pleading manner. Issei. Good son he said giving him a hug that was reciprocated. Angel. Hey, Issei is already a father he said, pretending to be sad. Who know. But he won't be my dad soon she said curiously. Issei. What are you talking about, Angel? He said in a mischievous way. Who know. My mother and he are more than friends if you know what I mean she said amused. The Keno. Rr Angel why didn't you tell us anything she said with a smile like the other two black haired girls who emanated a murderous aura. 
Issei. At that moment Angel fell through terror he said mockingly. Angel. Issei, stop joking and save me he said terrified. Issei. Come on girls, don't get upset, you know that most likely we would have more girls, so don't get like that he said, trying to calm him down. Ikeno. But you still don't sleep today she said flirtatiously. Two weeks later. Then Alana and Grafia could be seen with their new outfits waiting with the others for the return of the white-haired man with Milikas. Issei. Hello, we're done with training he said calmly. Angel. I can see from your face that everything was a success he said relaxed. Issei. Look at it you Milikas come he said with joy to a nervous silver-haired girl. At that moment a black-haired man with overwhelming power entered the room. Milikas. Hello. Kyoto, Japan. In the Yakai territory there was a tense atmosphere since at the entrance an army from Atlantis was about to attack. Serzich. And don't regret not being in alliance with us he said through a hologram like the rest of the leaders, as is all saved while looking at Yasaka. Angel. And why should he regret it, said the black-haired man appearing behind Yasaka. Serzich. Angel he said scared. Angel. My beautiful Yasaka, you didn't tell me that you had a talk with some losers he said calmly kissing the Yakai. Yasaka. I'm sorry love, but the vermin are bothering you she said bored. Angel. Well, I'll go have fun with the Atlanteans he said in a funny way. On the battlefield. General Atlantean. Today let us treat our king's victory with pride and courage, said the leader of the army. Angel. The only thing they will find is death. Show of power. Angel. We're going to kick the Atlanteans butts he said amused. Atlantean general. Do not fear warriors, he is a simple man, take his life, and let us destroy the Yakai faction in the name of our lord Neptune he said seriously. So the whole exercise began to run against Angel, while he limited himself to walking until he was a few meters away from them, and began to attack them all. The leaders looked on in terror as they saw what they considered a simple human being massacring all the Atlanteans as if it were nothing, since it was almost impossible for supernatural armies to defeat one. Angel. Come on, don't make it so easy for me, it won't be fun like this he said while continuing with his massacre. But the Yakais. Yakai X. But what kind of warrior is that he said scared. Yakai C. He is an extremely powerful being he said in amazement. Isaka. He is the man I told you about, a warrior with a bloodthirsty spirit and my future husband she said with an excited face. Puno. My future father is amazing he said happily watching as Angel made his way through the exercise. The Yakai council members looked pleased to see such a warrior on their side. Angel was about to finish with the soldiers, only a few and the general were missing. Angel. What a piece of trash and yet you call yourself general, you're scum he said coldly. General. What are you talking about he said nervously. Angel. A true leader launches into battle in front of his warriors, he does not stay behind everyone like a cowardly rat he said seriously. General. Damn you, don't you dare call me he didn't continue because his head fell to the ground. Angel. Silence, your voice was unbearable he said without importance. Soldier. Mon monster what kind of thing are you he said terrified. Angel. I am a real demon, not the trash you find in the underworld he said without flinching. Soldier. Impo dot dot impossible, there are no monsters like you in any faction he said scared. Angel. We are a superior race to any being you can imagine, our king would be able to sweep the floor with Auroboros great red and Trahixa at the same time, now that you know silence at that moment, he and the few remaining soldiers exploded into pieces. Everything was silent, the leaders were more than terrified as they could not believe what they saw and heard, there was a being much more powerful than the three celestial dragons. Isaka. Honey, you were fantastic she said very happily approaching the black-haired boy. Puno. Dad you were amazing she said excitedly. Angel. Thanks but it was very easy he said a little bored. Isaka. Oh, that doesn't matter, by the way, they already found what you asked for she said, bringing a kind of jar. Angel. The Ming Dynasty vase, the second piece to release the demons he said with an evil smile. Isaka. Yes, I am very happy that the demon king will soon return she said happily. Before they could say anything Razor appeared and cut off his arms. Razor. What do you think? Damn, this is for Zenobia said the blonde with arrogance. Angel. And that's why you already think you're such a big deal by attacking from behind like a coward, that's the difference between you and us he said calmly, while a dark mist came out of his severed arms and joined with his severed pieces and put them back together. Razor im dot dot impossible, he said scared. Angel. We are better in every way, unlike you he said seriously, throwing a dark mist from his hands from which a bunch of flames came out. Razor. Ah what is this he screamed in horror. Angel. 
they are the flames of purgatory, and nothing in the world will put them out, and no matter how much you regenerate, it will be of no use, you will suffer until you are completely consumed, enjoy it, Chiki said, as if nothing happened while Razor continued screaming. Isaka. I'm glad you're okay. I was about to rip that damn chicken's head off she said calmly. Angel. Don't worry, that idiot wasn't a problem now because we're not going to fulfill Kuno's wish of having a little brother he said seductively. Isaka. Yes, let's go. With the leaders. Serzic. With what we just saw, what do you think? He said scared. Michael. We are stupid, we should never have believed in Vali, now we will pay the consequences of our actions he said scared. Auden. I had already told you that this was a mistake, but you didn't want to believe me. All we have left is to face our death he said seriously. Shiva. How about we offer them women and other things as an apology for what we did he said seriously. Auden. You don't understand, you just accelerated his death he said seriously, leaving the place. Zeus. I guess it's a good idea he said seriously. Serzich. Well that's what we'll do dot dot. But Issei. Rias. Issei, where are we going to go? She said curiously, hugging the white-haired boy. Issei. How about going to heaven? He said amused. Rias. If it seems perfect to me, it's time to shoot down a pigeon he said with a malevolent smile. Issei. Perfect but first Milikas come he said calmly. Milikas. Father, what do you want? He said calmly. Issei. Milikas I want you to go to the underworld to teach Lucifer a lesson he said calmly, while Milikas smiled sadistically. Milikas. It will be a pleasure. At the bottom of the sea in an underwater castle. Neptune. Who is that monster? He said furiously watching the recording of the massacre made by the black-haired man. Soldier. We don't have much information, but we know that he attacked the faction leaders and part of the DXD anti-terrorist group, along with another white-haired boy he said nervously. Neptune. Well, it seems that the only ones they support are the Yakes he said seriously. Counselor. Sir, what are you thinking? Asked one of the gentlemen close to the king. Neptune. Those brats could help us in our conquest. It's heaven or hell. Underworld, Gremory Castle rebuilt. We see Uriz Ein Serzic in his seat looking at a family photo thinking about all the mistakes he had made. It's very cute seeing that photo knowing that all this is happening because of you, like the other leader's stupid fault, said a voice that put the Mayu on alert. Serzic. Who are you? Show me, don't be a coward he said, getting up from his chair and putting himself on guard. Milikas. What's wrong? Don't you recognize your son? He said mockingly, appearing in front of the redeed, leaving him in shock. Serzic. My dot dot Milikas I dot it's you he said in shock. Milikas. Wow, you are really slow. I hadn't realized how stupid you are before he said mockingly dot. Serzich Milikas, what happened to you? Where is your mother? He said, coming out of shock. Milikas. My mother, hum, must be with my father and well, my change in appearance, I also owe to my father he said calmly. Serzich. But what the hell are you talking about? I am your father he said angrily. Milikas. You gave me life and I thank you for it, but you were never a father to me, instead Issei was, is and will be a father to me he said seriously. Serzic. I say he was the one who changed you I will kill him, I swear I will kill him he couldn't finish, because Milikas stabbed him in the chest with his sword. Milikas. Don't offend my father again, or it will cost you dearly he said seriously. Serzic. Ma dot dot damn that bastard won't take my family away from me, I won't allow it he said spitting blood. Milikas. How sad because I listened to my mother and she said that they would give me a little brother ha 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 she laughed with superiority. Serzich. No, it must not be a lie he said with his eyes open. Milikas. Well I have to go, otherwise mom will get upset, but I will leave you a souvenir he said, taking out his sword and cutting off the Mayu's arm. Ignore the sword. Serzich. My dot dot Milikas, hi dot dot son wait please he said desperately. Milikas. I'm not your son anymore dot. Sky. Ooh um. The loud explosion shook the entire sky, putting all the angels, seraphim and archangels on alert. Julio. Who dares to disturb the kingdom of God said the new Sekiruite. Issei. Oh stop, you know, I'm tired of hearing your nonsense about a fraud he said mockingly. Julio. Silence, I will not let you blaspheme about God he said angrily, invoking his glove. Issei. Oh wow, but look who we have here, the traitor lizard he said calmly. Greg. I don't know who you are, but I see that you know me he said seriously. They say. Oh what's wrong I look so different that you don't remember me, buddy he said amused, leaving the dragon in shock. Greg I dot say e dot it's you, but it's impossible you dot dot you were dead he said nervously. Julio. 
What what did you say? Is say, is say hi to the former Sekiruite, but you died, a renegade demon killed you, and your last wish is that Drake will look for a new bearer he said incredulously. Is say ha 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 you really believed that story ha 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 he said amused. Julio. What what are you talking about? He said nervously. At that moment, Galant called out to a very hurt Michael. Is say. Dad, I'm glad you came he said happily. Galant. Oh why son he said squeezing Michael's neck. Julio. Damn you dream of Mr. Michael he said seriously. Is say. Wait, you don't want to know the truth he said seriously. Julio. What are you talking about? He said seriously. Michael Drake. Don't listen to him they both said nervously. Is say. That everything they told you was a lie because the ones who really killed me were the leaders and the anti-terrorist group DXD, because I was trash compared to Vali, and you, like the rest of the people, fell like idiots he said mockingly. Valand. Come on, say it's a lie, do it so they turn into stone he said amused. Julio. It's true what he said is true he said angrily looking at Michael. Michael. E dot it's true he said lowering his head. Julio. Fu dot dot I was tricked so I wasn't chosen as the Sekiryute I was just a fool who was used for their amusement he said falling to his knees as his wings turned black. They say. Wow, I can't stand the truth and I became a loser he said amused. Gabriel. No Dulio he said in shock. Bria's silence hit she said slamming the angel against the ground. Michael Gabriel Dulio do something he said desperately. Greg. Dulio answers help Gabriel he said frantically. They say. Do you want me to free you from your torment? He said taking out his sword. Julio. Please, what should I do? Angels lie, people kill, no one is free of sin he said dejectedly, looking at Issei with a lost look. Issei. You're right, nobody is perfect, but you can always make a choice that changes your life, and now it's your turn he said calmly. Julio. What are you talking about? He said dejectedly. Issei. Soon the demon king will come and everyone can serve him, but only if they swear loyalty he said seriously. Julio. And I can have a second chance he said incredulously. They say. Sure, just stretch out your hand he said calmly, as the former angel stretched out his hand with the booster gear. Without saying anything else, Issei cut off his arm, but the strange thing is that Dulio didn't make any gesture of pain, while Issei took his arm with Dreg. Dreg. What are you going to do to me? He said nervously. They say. Don't worry, we'll have fun, but now you'll receive your reward he said while covering Dulio with a dark orb. After a few seconds the orb disappeared revealing Dulio with a totally different appearance. They say. How do you feel? He said happily seeing a purple-haired man with the wings of a fallen man. Dulio. I feel incredible sir he said kneeling before him. They say. Well now you are my general, get ready because our time to act is here he said seriously. Dulio. As you order he said calmly. They say. Fine, but now you must complete your first mission, kill Michael he said seriously. Dulio. With pleasure he said creating a sword of light while Galen left Michael on the ground. Gabriel. No no please Dulio don't do it she said desperately. Michael. No do dot dot Dulio stop no dot dot don't do it he said weakly standing up. Dulio. Because I should stop he said, stabbing his sword into Michael's neck. More or less like this. They say. Perfect, now let's go he said calmly. Rias. What are we going to do with her? She said holding Gabriel. They say. Bringing her with us is time for her to pay. The tragic news. Asgard Odin's palace. We see the father of all sitting with a thoughtful look. Odin. It seems that the sky has fallen, it's just some stupid children who believed themselves to be gods, now they are paying the consequences he said seriously. Valkyrie X. My lord, what should we do in this critical situation? She said worriedly. Odin. Go get her. Sky. Julio. My lord, with the death of the false god, the whole system will fall just as the sky will crumble he said seriously. They say. Well, I think it's time to go, bring that stupid pigeon he said seriously. Rias. With pleasure she said amused dragging Gabriel while holding her hair. They say. It was a nice place, what a pity. Vix Residentia Haidu. Everyone watched in horror as Arena screamed in pain as her halo and wings disappeared. Ali. What the hell is going on said the silver-haired man worriedly. Arena. Op oh dot dot please my lord help me ah she screamed and writhed in pain. Hiba. We must report this to Mr. Serzich he said worriedly. Castillo Gremory. Sir Offal. What does Odin want? He said with a form ass watching a hologram where the rest of the leaders were. Odin. I just came to tell you something quickly so you learn he said seriously. Azazel. Don't you think we should wait for Michael? He said seriously. Odin. He can't he said seriously. Zeus. Why not he said seriously. Odin. Because he's dead he said, shocking everyone. Shiva. What are you talking about? 
he said incredulously. Odin. For that I summoned you, heaven has fallen and its ruler has died he said seriously. Serzich. This is impossible. I do residence. We see the white-haired boy with a satisfied smile while Rissa went to a room and threw Gabriel. Angel. Wow, you had fun destroying the sky he said calmly appearing next to Yusaka. They say. And how are you? He said looking at the yakai who was limping as she walked. Angel. What can I say, her body and everyone else's body drives me crazy he said while drinking some wine. They say. I can't find any flaws in your logic, but look what I have he said, dropping the booster gear. Angel. Oh but look who we have here, the stupid traitor lizard he said seriously. Greg. What what are you going to do with me? He said a little nervously. They say. What's wrong? Don't tell me you're afraid of death he said seriously. Angel. Wait, why be so benevolent he said seriously. They say. What are you talking about he said curiously. Angel. Death would be an easy way out for him, why don't we torture him with Samuel's blood? I bet it will be fantastic to see him beg and plead for his pathetic life to the point that he begs for his death, he said in a sadistic voice. They say I think it's perfect. Four days later. The boys have had fun torturing the dragon with Samuel's blood, but not only them, all the girls have tortured Gabriel in unimaginable ways for being treacherous. They say. You know it makes me sad he said looking at the brown-haired boy. Gustav. No, what? He said, staring at him. They say. That stupid Michael won't be able to see how his dear little sister is he said amused watching as Akeno electrocuted Gabriel and then Rhea's hit her with her arm covered in the power of destruction. Angel. I think you he couldn't finish because a portal opened from which a very injured gothic lowly came out. Just imagine that he is on the verge of death. They say office said running to help her. Office I dot say I dot knew you were dot dot alive he said with difficulty. They say. Office who did this to you he said worried. Office. Wow. It was Big Red, I knew about the betrayal, and I thought he could help you, but he was with them and told me not to get involved, and he started attacking me, he also locked me in the dimensional gap trying to kill me, but I took advantage of the opportunity to escape, forgive me, I was weak he said, falling unconscious. They say. I'll kill that bastard he said furiously. Angel. Calm down he said seriously. Rhea's office said worried. Akeno. What happened she said looking at the lowly. They say. It was the damn big red that bastard is dead he said furiously. Angel. I know I won't be able to stop you, but think that you are not on par with him he said seriously. They say. I know I can beat him, plus I have assault mode he said angrily. Angel. It is forbidden if you do not control it he said seriously. They say. I don't care, I just want to kill him he said angrily. Angel. Okay, go and tell your bucking mother, but go with our parents and soldiers just in case he said seriously. They say. Well, what are you going to do? He said seriously. Angel. I'll go to Asgard, it's time to have another piece. I'll go with my maids, girls. You help in the recovery and tell the others he said calmly. Rias. Okay Akeno go tell the others, I'll start the treatment she said, while lifting the lowly and Akeno left. They say. It's time to kill a lizard. Asgard Odin's palace. Valkyrie X. My lord, four dark presences are on the Bifrost bridge she said worriedly. Odin. So they finally arrived he said resignedly. Valkyrie X. Sir, your orders she said worriedly. Odin. Let all warriors retreat and do not stand in his way said Tranquilo. But Angel. Eri Alpha. It seems that they were waiting for us said the one with the giant bracelets. Narbral. Sir, it could be a trap he said it would be. Angel. Don't worry, nothing bad will happen to you when you're with me he said smiling and blushing at the three of them. Shizu Delta. The master is very generous she said trying to hide her blush. So the four continued walking until they reached the palace. It should be noted that every Asgardian they encountered quickly looked away. Odin. You must be Angel he said looking at the four standing in front of him. Eerie. This was a trap he said, getting into a combat stance upon seeing a fairly large group of warriors and Valkyries around Odin. Angel. I see you prepared a party for our arrival he said holding his sword. Odin. Wait, I don't want to fight he said seriously. Angel. A deal is not what we came for so don't even try he said seriously. Without saying anything, Odin approached the brown-haired boy and knelt down, putting his head in front of his feet. More or less like this. Odin. Take my life but do not hurt my people. Dimensional gap. We see a group of well-known people appearing in front of a large red dragon. Gr. Who are they and what do they want? He said in an imposing manner trying to intimidate. They say. Your head. The fall of a god. Dimensional gap. He are my head ha 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 don't make me laugh he said mockingly. They say. Helbliz he said seriously while throwing some powerful flames from his hand. 
gr. I scream in despair after receiving the attack. I say. It's time for you to die. The still Lucifer. Surzich and the few leaders were gathered together after what happened in the sky. Ali. You're saying that they destroyed heaven and killed Michael he said in disbelief and terrified. Irina. Michael Sama this can't be she said with tears. Azazel. Don't you see, we have to make them out to be criminals so people will know they are dangerous he couldn't continue because Serafal spoke. Serafal. Shut your damn mouth, you don't understand, tell me what's the point of everyone finding out that they are dangerous. They erased the sky as if it were nothing, they destroyed Grigory as if it were a game, don't you understand? We have no salvation, they will kill us without compassion, and now they will come for us, she said out of her mind leaving the room, leaving everyone terrified. Ajuka. Thank you Serzic for your stupid decision, you condemn us all he said leaving the place. Kaneko. Where dot dot where is Aden Sama? Asgard Aden's palace. Everyone was more than surprised by their leader's attitude. Angel. You have honor father of all to give your life for your people, but how do you not know that after your death, I will not kill all your people he said seriously. Aden. I know you are cruel and ruthless, but you are also beings of word he said without getting up from the ground. Angel. Wise words Aden, I take your offer, but first I need two things, the sword turfing, and that traitor Valkyrie he said seriously. Aden. Okay. Okay he said nervously. Twenty minutes later. The very battered Valkyrie could be seen and next to her a sword with a dark aura. Angel. Wow, you look bad, just what you deserve he said approaching her and holding her by the head. By doing so he could see that she was locked up for opposing to betray the brown-haired boy and how she was graped by Azazel on a few occasions with a mental spell. Angel. You you didn't betray him, you loved him he said trembling with fury. Roswis. I say I'm sorry forgive me she said with tears and a lost look. Angel. Yuri take it, Shizu take the sword he said, pulling out his sword furiously. Aden. It's true, I made everyone think that she betrayed him he said sadly. Ross's grandma. He's a bastard, how could he do that to my granddaughter she said with disgust. Angel. You do not deserve the title of the father of all he said decapitating Aden without hesitation. Everyone watched as their leader was murdered in cold blood, but they also didn't believe that he could do such despicable things. Soldier. Hail Angel King of Asgard he said kneeling while everyone did the same. Angel King of Asgard. Dimensional Gap. Big Red looked wounded at the albino who remained motionless in front of him. Dr. Who are you? He said hurt. Issei. Don't you recognize me? I'm Issei he said seriously. Dr. How is it possible you were dead he said furiously. Issei. Dying, that's not one of my priorities he said taking out a sword. Big Red said nothing, beginning to glow and becoming smaller, taking on a human form. Dr. I knew that the stupid factions couldn't do it, I had to do it myself he said, launching himself into the attack just like the albino. Strong shock waves quickly began to form, shaking the dimensional gap. Once beat. They are currently even but in a short time the dragon will have the advantage he said seriously. Valand. Don't worry, my son will be able to do it he said confidently. Milikas. It's true dad won't lose he said seriously. The fight continued, neither of them backing down no matter the damage. Gr. You have become powerful enough to match a god he said increasing his power. So the lizard began to land quite a few blows that sent the albino flying, and its speed prevented him from reacting. Gr. What happens where all your trust is, Brett? He said without stopping his attack. I say. Stop being so arrogant he said holding the dragon's fist while a mark appeared on his forehead. Gr. Just increasing your power a little won't defeat me he said seriously. I say. Come on, relax. If I release all my power, this wouldn't be fun he said, giving him a hard slap, sending him flying dot. Dr. Silence pathetics come you will never surpass me now or ever, and when I kill them, I will look for that hitch from infinity and grape her until I get tired, and then I will kill her he could not continue, because Issei gave him a strong blow to the abdomen. Issei. Prepare to die he said while releasing a large amount of power. Valand. Issei, don't do it, you still don't control it, he said worriedly. Issei. I will destroy you in the most ruthless way possible, you will regret having said that he said furiously, while a great blow was produced. Angel. This crazy guy is going to get into that state he said seriously. Rias. Issei be careful she said nervously. Return. The dimensional gap was silent as an overwhelming power was felt everywhere. Issei. What's wrong, the cat ate your tongue, lizard he said with a new, rather terrifying appearance, as he slowly approached the dragon that kept shaking. Dr. Wa dot dot how is it p dot Sibel, how did you surpass my power he said scared. I say. This is what hatred and revenge achieve he said seriously. Dr. Po dot dot please have mercy on me I beg you he said terrified. 
Issei didn't say anything and turned around and started walking, relieving the red. Ooh, um. The loud explosion occurred where Big Red was, shaking the entire dimensional gap. Issei. Mercy is something I don't know. War is declared. Underworld Gremory Castle. We see the leaders quite scared after feeling that overwhelming power. Sirzich. Sir Serafal, we must stay together, he said, watching the brunette return to the room. Serafal. What's the point? We'll just make your job easier, she said with annoyance. Before anyone could continue, a soldier ran in earnestly. Soldier. Sir, we have received a signal from Asgard, he said seriously. Sirzich let her in, he said seriously. Azazel. Hey old man, where did you get yourself into? He said curiously, watching a screen that focused on his throne from behind. Angel. Who are you calling old crow? He said in a serious voice, turning the throne. Shiva. You you damn thing, what did you do to Auden? He said seriously. Angel. Let's say the old man had an app from which he will never be able to wake up he said smiling, raising the decapitated head of the father of all. Zeus. You you killed Auden he said scared. Angel. You'll be an idiot like you are a god if you're looking at the head that you think happened and you ask such a stupid question he said annoyed. Serzich. You also destroyed Asgard he said nervously. Angel. What can I say he said moving his vision seeing the Asgardians. Asgardians. Hey la angel king of Asgard they said in unison. Angel. What do you think now I rule Asgard and my first order is to break the alliance with the factions and declare war on them he said with a sadistic smile. Zeus. Are you willing to face a war against all of us? He said seriously. Angel. Oh god of Olympus, I don't make a false step he said with a smile. At that moment a magic circle appeared in his ear leaving him in shock. Angel. Surprise he said with a smile. Shiva. Zeus what's wrong? He said nervously when he saw the Olympian's face. Zeus. Olympus was attacked by my daughters he said incredulously. At that moment Artemis appeared in the image kissing the boy. Artemis. Love, your mission is already done, and my sister has the spear of Triumph, she said happily. Zeus. Daughter, how could they he said hurt. Artemis. You keep quiet as if you were offended when you knew that my sister loved to say, and yet you betrayed him she said seriously and with hatred. Shiva. But how did they get the weapons of Poseidon and Hades? I understand that Zeus's thunder was in Olympus but theirs. He said confused. Artemisa. Easy, our mothers-in-law took care of the work she said calmly. Angel. I hope you are ready to die he said seriously, cutting off the communication. Serzich. We are lost. Dot. I do mansion. We see the albino appear in front of his loved ones and a recovered office. Rias. Issei, how did it go? She said, hugging him along with the others. Issei. Don't worry, I'm fine and regarding that, let's say that there are only two dragon gods left he said seriously. Office. You killed him she said incredulously. Issei. Of course, after what he did to you, I wasn't going to sit back and do nothing he said, holding his cheek. Dot. Office. Thank you she said with a deep blush. Issei. For you and the others I will destroy whoever he said seriously making the girls blush. Athena. Oh my love, you don't know how happy it makes me to hear that she said happily appearing with Melascula and Derieri. Issei. Hi darling, I see you got it he said happily as the girl gave him the spear. Melascula. Poor Poseidon must have given me his trident without much resistance she said happily. Issei. I see, and how did it go for you Derieri san he said curiously. Derieri. That pile of bones was no problem he said calmly. Milikas. Where is Uncle Angel he said curiously. Angel hey, are you having fun? Said through a screen. Issei. Idiot where are you? Come celebrate he said seeing the boy on the throne. Angel. I would love to, but I can't abandon my people he said calmly. Sona. Angel, what are you talking about? She said curiously. Angel. What happened is that I killed Odin and now I am king of Asgard he said happily. All. What they shouted in disbelief. Issei. E. You're serious he said coming out of shock. Angel. That's right, now we have control over Asgard and we already have all the pieces, all that's missing is the sapphire of darkness that is in the hands of the demons he said seriously. Issei. Don't worry, I know how to get it, but tell me, the leaders already know about this change of hands he said curiously. Angel. If I actually declared war on them he said with a sadistic smile. Issei. Excellent and don't worry I'll take care of the sapphire he said maliciously. Angel. Perfect. Two days later. Things were tense, everyone found out what happened in Asgard and have begun to enlist their armies in Atlantis, the Cow's Brigade, the factions and the factions that are with Issei also highlighting that Vali and the Foxes were desperately searching for Great Red to help them but could not find any clue as to his whereabouts. Infraworld of Citri Castle. 
We see a brunette with pigtails sitting in her office with tears coming out of her face as she looks at a photo of her and Sona as children while drinking a bottle of whiskey. Seraphal. Where did I go wrong? She said without stopping crying. I say. Do you want me to tell you or do you prefer that I make you a list? He said seriously appearing in a corner of the office. Seraphal. I say she screamed scared, dropping the whiskey. I say. Hey, it was a good brand he said looking at the broken bottle. Seraphal. What what are you doing here? You came to kill me she said scared. I say. No, I didn't come to talk to an old friend. I can he said approaching where Seraphal had more bottles. Seraphal cl sure, but then why did you come she said curiously. I say. Hey, I already told you, let's talk, don't get upset, drink a little baby he said, giving him a glass, just as he poured himself one. Seraphal th thanks she said starting to drink. I say. Seraphal I want you to be honest with me he said seriously. Seraphal. Oh okay she said separating the glass. I say. Because you betrayed me he said seriously while Seraphal swallowed. Seraphal. I I she said nervously. I say. Speak, I won't do anything to you, I swear he said seriously. Seraphal. I think it was because of jealousy she said the last thing sadly in a whisper. I say. Sorry for that he said incredulously. Seraphal. You never listened to me and when I had the courage to tell you my feelings I heard you speak and I heard you call me immature, childish, someone who would never get a boy's attention she said sadly. I say. Yes, I did say it, but you finished listening to everything I said he said seriously. Seraphal. No, I couldn't stand it and I ran away she said sadly. I say. After that I said, but even with all those problems or defects you conquered my heart he said with a cold voice. Seraphal. What the are you serious? She said with tears understanding how stupid she was. I say. Yeah, well, I think I have to go, bye he said, getting up. Seraphal. No way to say please give me a chance I will do whatever she said desperately and crying. I say. Whatever he said with a raised eyebrow. Seraphal. Yes yes whatever she said hopefully. I say. I think you can do something for me. The battle breaks out. The atmosphere was tense across all factions, war was just around the corner, and the smell of death was growing stronger. I do mansion. We see the albino pensive as he coldly watched it happen. Angel. What are you worried about? He said seriously looking at the albino. They say. Nothing, I just think about the disadvantage we are at he said seriously. Angel. Disadvantage hum it is true that we only have the Yakai and Asgardian armies, but in a certain way we are totally powerful beings, and the girls too, he said seriously. They say. Yes, but I really don't know. On one side there are the factions, on the other there is the cow's brigade, and finally there is Atlantis he said thoughtfully. Dot. Angel. Hum, that's right, there are quite a few rivals, we could wait before attacking he said seriously. They say. It could be but it's also risky, they'll know something is wrong when they don't see us there he said seriously. Rias. I say everything is ready only the orb of darkness is missing she said entering the place with a keno. I say. I see, thanks he said seriously. Angel. I say, what if we just hold on? He said seriously. I say. What do you mean? He said curiously. Angel. We'll go alone with our parents and Milikas, and when the seal is broken we'll go with everything he said seriously. I say. That could be an excellent idea, and I think I can get more power he said seriously as he entered a room followed by the brown-haired boy. Angel. So the advantage will be ours he said seriously watching as Issei held a red glove. I say. It's time he said seriously. Greg. What what are you going to do he said nervously. I say. You were locked up here with one purpose, and that is to give power, and that is what you will do he said, starting to press the glove. Greg no dot dot no what are you doing please I see couldn't continue because the booster gear broke. I say. See you later, buddy he said as his eyes turned green. Angel. And how do you feel he said curiously. I say. Ready to kill. Two days later. Underworld. We can see three large armies looking at each other ready to fight for their survival. Serzich. Everything is ready he said nervously. Zeus. Yes, all our people are here, although I must admit that the lack of those three armies is a great disadvantage he said seriously. Shiva. Although we have the slight advantage that the few angels who survived became fallen he said seriously. Azazel. Where the hell did Seraphal go? He said seriously. Ali. Here we don't care where those bastards are he said angrily. Bajuka. So soon you want to die he said angrily, bothering Vali. Serzich. Please gentlemen calm down we must stay united he said seriously. Before he could continue, a large circle opened in the sky, Issei and Angel fell with their parents and the black-haired boy. Issei. 
Hello everyone ready for this great party screamed with joy. Angel? Hey, I think you exaggerated a little he said with a drop of sweat on his head. Issei. Whatever, you all know who I am, my name is Ed Haidu Issei, the former Sekiruite. Some of you will think that I was dead, but I'm afraid not, and don't think that I am with you, I'm just coming to give you a little warning serious shout. Rizivam. Oh, the kid came to threaten us he said mockingly. Issei. You have exactly two minutes to surrender or else you will all die serious shout causing fear in the leaders, but mockery in the other armies. Rizivam haha ha you and that little group don't make me laugh he said mockingly. Neptune. You will be the ones who will die he said seriously. Issei. How curious this guy said the same thing he said seriously while twisting his fingers, and from a magic circle the big red head fell. Everyone turned pale upon seeing such a thing, they couldn't believe that this was possible. Rizivam. How how did they do that? He said nervously. Issei. What's wrong Lucifer where is your smile he said seriously. Tick tick. Acme brand sound effects. Issei. Oh oh I think the two minutes have passed, it's time to die he said launching himself into the attack. So everyone split up. Milik is against the factions with their grandparents, Angel's parents against Atlantis, and the kids against the Cow's Brigade. Unknown location. Sona. Where is that idiot? She said annoyed while she was in a strange crevice with the others. Seraphal. Here I am, sorry for the delay, some idiots wouldn't let me through she said nervously. Rias. You brought it she said it would be. Seraphal. Here it is she said taking out a black sphere. Rias. The orb of darkness the final piece he said it would be. Scanty. Let's start with the ritual she said, while the others placed the objects in position. Knee socks. Now the final piece the blood of a virgin descendant of Ki he said holding a sword while Graphia and Venelana held Gabriel. Athena. You stupidly thought that Isekai would forgive you if you gave him your virginity, how pathetic she said, lowering the angel's head. Gabriel. Seraphal please help me please we were friends she said desperately. Seraphal. I already made a mistake once, I don't plan on doing it twice, she said while looking coldly. Gabriel. Please father help she couldn't continue because Nisox decapitated her. Scanty Nisox. That which must remain sealed, that which shook the world with its power, we ask it to rise again and bring death and destruction to rule over all they said in unison, while the objects were bathed in Gabriel's blood. The objects began to levitate while taking on strange shapes. Rias. The demons will rise again. Underworld Battlefield. Things were not going well for the armies at all, since no one could stop the demons. Sir Erg. My dot dot Milikas why are you doing this he said without his arm and with one eye. Milikas. You would never understand it he said seriously. Rizivam. Release the Trahiksa he said nervously. Neptune. Call Kthulhu he said furiously watching his troops being massacred. So the place began to shake as two large creatures with terrifying appearances appeared. Rizivam. What will they do in the face of the beast of the apocalypse? He said, frantically. Neptune. Suffer the fury of the ruler of the ocean he said the same way. Rizivam Neptune. They will be able to stop they could not continue because a monstrous power was felt everywhere. They say the king has been released. The end of the world as we know it. Everyone felt that monstrous power as some fell from the pressure while others simply fainted. They say. Bow before the new king he said seriously. Rizivam. What the hell is that? He said scared. Angel. That thing you called him is the real demon king he said with amusement. At that moment three fairly large magic circles were created, one larger than the others, from the two smaller ones came the armies of Yakai and Asgard commanded by Dulio, and from the last one came the girls with an imposing creature larger than the Trahiksa. Serzic. Boo but what is that thing he said completely scared. Issei. Show respect fourth rate demon, he is the demon king he said seriously. R.D. Issei, Angel have done a good job, and I see that they have prepared a war for me that is welcome and satisfactory, said the demon with an imposing voice. Issei. We thank you for your words my lord, and we are pleased to hear your words he said kneeling next to the others followed by the two armies. R.D. I see brave soldiers who are on our side, do not be afraid, you chose the right side, and I know that in a great war many lives are lost, and that is why I will make my small contribution he said, seriously stretching out his hand. The ground began to break and two types of creatures emerged from it, some fat and red and others thin and gray. Following the appearance of these creatures, Yakai and his guardians began to celebrate and acclaim their new ruler. They say. Now where is your pride Rizivam, Neptune he said mockingly. Trahiksa. Gwar I don't care who that clown is, I'll take care of killing him, he's no match for the beast of the apocalypse he said furiously, throwing himself with everything. They say. Inso couldn't continue because Ray spoke. R.D. 
You will never be at my level, son of a key he said, slashing with a large sword, cutting the dragon in half. Everyone was shocked to see how the great beast of the apocalypse was killed with a simple slash. RD. I leave the rest to you he said seriously as Cthulhu's head also fell. They say. Attack he shouted as everyone launched into the attack. The enemy armies had no choice but to rush against them. Thus began a great battle that soon showed blood and death everywhere. Angel. And you are a descendant of the original demon he said mockingly hitting Rizavim. Rizavim? What what kind of monsters are you? He said trying to defend himself. Angel. Of the most bloodthirsty he said cutting off the head of Euclid who came to defend his lord. Rizavim? I'll give you anything, but don't the boy couldn't continue, he grabbed her tongue and ripped it out. Angel. What I want is your death he said creating a dark flame in his hand. Rizavim? Ah he started screaming as he began to burn. Angel. One less. Rias. But look here we have the group of hitches here she said mockingly looking at what was left of her entourage. Arena. What do you want, crimson hitch? She said angrily. Rias. Oh, the hitch is angry because her stupid religion ceased to exist and she is no longer an angel she said mockingly. Arena. I'll make you swallow your shovel she couldn't continue because Akeno moved, burying her fist in her heart, ripping it out in one go. Akeno. I'm sorry your voice was already bothering me she said creating a fire spear and placing it in the hole. Kaneko. Who dot dot but you why did you do this she said sadly. Rias. Wow, what a hypocrite you turned out to be, you piece of shit cat, you know the answer, you and those hitches caused this, along with the leaders, now accept your destiny she said it would be releasing a large amount of power of destruction. Hiroka. I won't let you hurt my sister she couldn't continue because laughter covered her mouth. Rias. If you want to die first, I don't care she said, moving very quickly, grabbing the Nekamata's tail and yanking it off. Hiroka. Ah she screamed in horror, but it didn't last long as Rissa with the same tail began to strangle her. Rias. Suffer, suffer, damn what you feel, you suffer for betraying a say she said furiously. Akeno. Something's missing she said amusedly tearing off her ears. The brunette tried to free herself, but it was more than clear that Rias was superior and she was applying more and more force. Rias. Oops, I think she died she said mockingly as she left the lifeless body of the Nekamata. Hineko. This didn't have to end like this she said sadly as she began to cry. Rias. No, it didn't have to end like this, but you are the only ones responsible she said, giving the albino a strong blow to the head, so that Akeno would finish her off with a blow that sent her to the ground. Hineko. Who dot dot but you I dot I'm sorry I was stupid she said sadly, as her vision became blurry. Rias. It's too late she said as they both launched a combined attack. Kaneko. Excuse me a say senpai she said disappearing due to the powerful attack. Rias. And there's only one left she said looking at a blonde who was praying sadly. Asia. My lord, I know you are somewhere and you protect us he did not continue because Rissa and Akeno ripped their arms off at high speed. Akeno. He doesn't exist and even if he did, do you think he would forgive and protect a boar like you? She said coldly. Rias. With your sacred gear you were valuable, but since the sky fell you are an unimportant being. I don't understand how you are here she said coldly tearing off her head without compassion. Akeno. We're done with them. Sona. What's happening, where's your courage, idiot? She said, seeing Saji without legs or arms and with a large blood stain on his crotch. Saji. Ma dot dot damn you are going to dot dot regret this he said weakly. Tsubaki. Who will help you, the prince, the transvestite or the faggots who follow Vali he said it would be by throwing the severed bodies of those mentioned above. Sona. Die at once and free us from your disgusting existence she said decapitating the blonde. Sona. It was just garbage. Serzich. Serafal how could you do this he said terrified watching as Serafal decapitated Azazel and Ajuka. Serafal. You don't understand right, Issei has forgiven me. I will be one of his partners and he will surely be very happy when we kill you he said happily, while Venelana and Grafia fell dot. Serzich. Grafia my master he couldn't continue because Grafia interrupted him. Grafia shut up trash, I'm nothing to yours she said angrily. Venelana. I think we're going to have fun. The end of the road. Serzich couldn't believe it, his wife and mother were standing in front of him ready to kill him. Zioticus v. Venelana because he said incredulously. Venelana. Silence cockroach you know perfectly well the answer you betrayed the person our daughter loved the most for an idiot who will never equal her power that opened my eyes, and now I understand that I love him too, and very soon I will give him a very powerful son, how you laugh not like that useless one you have next to you, she said dryly touching her belly. Zioticus. No no this can't be, I'll kill him, I swear I'll kill him. He couldn't continue because Venelana pierced him with the sword of the power of destruction. Venelana. Don't swear in vain she said kicking his head off. 
Zerzich pod ad no this no dot he didn't continue because Grafia hit him hard from behind crashing him against the ground. Grafia. Everything we do has consequences, now you understand she said stepping on her head. Then Alana. Now why don't you repeat what you told us when they betrayed us say, tell us what was best for the faction she said, crossing her chest with her hand, causing great pain in the redeed. Zerzich. I I he tried to speak but the pain didn't allow him. Grafia. Don't try to give cheap excuses, it's more than obvious that nothing will save you she said, creating a giant ice dagger that Venelana covered with the power of destruction. Venelana. You will always be a disgrace to me she said dropping the dagger. Grafia. Goodbye, you fake demon. On the other hand, Milikas treated Neptune like a child who could not believe that a brat could humiliate him. Milikas. What's up, rubbish. Don't tell me you're tired he said, amused. Neptune. Damn brat, I'll show you who I am. Nobody makes fun of King Neptune he said angrily, throwing a large torrent of water. Milikas. Poor stupid he said seriously taking out his sword and launching a purple fire cut that without any problem evaporated all the water. Neptune. Impossible he said incredulously. Crash. In the middle of both something fell causing a large crater that caught their attention. Milikas Neptune. Shiva both saw that the god of destruction was very wounded at the bottom of the crater. Angel. You have fun with fish he said amused appearing next to Milikas. Milikas. Uncle you are fighting with Shiva he said curiously. Angel. Fighting, what a good joke, this garbage can't even defend itself, it's disappointing that he calls himself the god of destruction, he said while kicking him, sending him flying. Milikas. I see in my father he said curiously. Angel. He was finishing off the Olympians, and he could see how he split Ares in half he said calmly. Milikas. I see, thanks he said getting ready to continue the battle. Angel. Don't hold back, show me your true power he said as he left. Milikas okay, enough with the games. In the distance we see a goddess of infinity sitting on the corpses of the Egyptian gods. Office. Powerless trash she said boredly while holding Anubis's head. Rias. You're having fun she said while dragging the body of a certain witch. Office. Not much I see that you had no mercy with anyone he said with a satisfied smile. Rias. Yes, but she's alive, so think fast she said, throwing La Fay into the sky. Office quickly released a blast of power destroying the body instantly. Rias. Great shot. On the other side of the field we could see a totally terrified Vali who couldn't believe how much death and destruction there was, especially seeing how many of the beings he had met were lifeless, murdered in ways that were too grotesque to make anyone vomit. Albion. Now you understand what your stupidities caused he said seriously. Vali. Shut up, you should help me escape he said nervously. Albion. Escape haha ha, poor idiot you don't understand right there is no escape for once in your pathetic and disgusting life, accept the consequences of your actions he said seriously. Ali. E. This didn't have to end like this, it had to end with me as the hero of the factions married to all the girls, including Rias he said, trembling with anger and fear. Issei. It's a pity that you laugh, she's not a hitch like those who decided to follow you he said mockingly appearing behind the albino causing absolute terror. Ali. No. Dot, dot, no you should be dead and I should have my happy ending he said angrily. Issei. As you are he said throwing a photograph at him. Ali. What what is this he said nervously lifting the photo. Issei. It's a little souvenir of how I bucked your bucking mother before killing her, in the worst way you can imagine he said very amused. Bali looked in horror as the photo showed Issei penetrating his mother. Bali ma dot damn you he shouted furiously launching himself into the attack, summoning his armor. Issei. Your attempts are useless he said giving him a blow that broke his armor completely. Bali. Well because why do you always have to be there to ruin my happiness? Furious scream. Issei. Easy because you tried to take my beloved Rias away from me, and that was your death sentence he said appearing behind him slamming him against the ground. Ali. Ma dot dot damn you a thousand times damned he said angrily. Issei. Could you please shut up? It's frustrating to hear your disgusting voice. Hey Albion, I propose a deal he said seriously, holding his wings dot. Albion. What will happen hi do Issei he said curiously. Issei. Join me and in exchange I will free you from your prison he said seriously. Albion. I accept Haidu Issei from now on I will be loyal to you he said seriously. Ali. Damn, you traitorous lizard he said weakly. Issei. I think you won't need it anymore he said tearing off the wings with a strong pull. Bali ah screamed in pain while writhing in pain. Issei. Be free he said while the shining wings and a white dragon came out and bowed to him. Ali. What what are you waiting for, damn it, kill me, you've already taken everything from me he said weakly. Issei. No, calm down, death is not enough punishment he said in a deranged manner. At that moment I created a magic circle that made Vali shine. Issei. 
Hello Valerie he said mockingly seeing the albino transformed into a girl. Valerie. Ma dot dot damn what I did to myself she couldn't continue because the chestnut tree opened a gap that swallowed her. I say. Have fun dot. Purgatory. The albino fell and with great effort she stood up and was horrified seeing Zenovia naked covered in a white liquid with an empty look and dried tears and around her unpleasant looking creatures. Valerie. No no she said scared as she backed away seeing how the creatures were looking at her, but she crashed into something. When she turned around she saw more creatures like those who held her tightly to begin raping her. Valerie Axelai Uo. Battlefield. The army of Issei and company began to group together as they looked at piles of corpses and blood everywhere. Demon King. Today our superiority was demonstrated and from now on everything belongs to us he said seriously while everyone celebrated. Issei. I think it's time for phase 2 he said seriously. Demon King. If you're right, it's time to enslave the humans. Epilogue. Three years later. Time passed slightly quickly after that great war that left the original demons as the victors, but their battle did not end there two months later, they began the attack on the human world who could not do anything, and quickly ended up looking like some survived having two options succumb to the new rulers, or join the multiple resistance that were all over the world, but were quickly destroyed by. The say in company. The invasion only lasted a year before the demon succeeded in their mission towards a new world was formed, ruled by the demon king, also the kingdom was divided into three the earth the largest and most populated territory was left in the hands of the demon king Asgard, the Nordic kingdom was left in the hands of Angel as he was already the king, and together with the Yakes, formed a new kingdom. Where both races would prosper and the underworld ruled by Issei who had control of all supernatural beings who survived and surrendered to him, in addition to that a new demonic repopulation program was started using the blood of grey and red demons so that the babies were useful for the king's designs. Thus a period of peace and tranquility came to Issei and his wives, with whom he did not waste time, since he liked to enjoy pleasure, although with some he could not because of their pregnancy states Benalana, Grafia, Office, Sona and Seraphal, in addition to the paperwork or difficult jobs for Dulio, who ended up marrying Roswis after Issei forgave her. On the other hand Angel led his kingdom with a firm but fair hand, we could say that of the three kingdoms this was the most peaceful, since both races admired their leader without fear. Issei. What a cold place, huh? said the boy walking through a forest. Angel. Now tell me why the hell we are here, I was very busy he said curiously and with disgust. Issei. Busy with continuing to have hex with your women he said amused without stopping walking. Angel. It's very funny when someone says that he has a secretary to take care of the paperwork and spend more time with his wives he said ironically. Issei. I understood well, I felt a powerful power that was felt in this place he said arriving at a cave. Angel. And don't tell me that you're scared and that's why you called me he said seriously. I say. No, the truth is that I just wanted someone else to be there to see what was here, he said curiously. So both boys entered the cave using their magic to see in the dark. Angel. Hey man, there's nothing here he said seriously. I say. I don't understand what pa he couldn't continue because they both saw a powerful light. As they got closer they could see that it was a fairly large crack and as they stood in front of it they could see what looked like an infinite universe. They say. What the heck is that he said confused. It's the Nexus said a voice behind them. Quickly, they both stood on guard and turned around to see a being with a mask and strange clothes. They say. Who are you he said seriously. Hey calm down cowboy, I don't want to fight, my name is Drift said the strange being seriously. Angel. Derivative, what a strange name, that doesn't matter, you said that that was the connection that it is he said seriously. Drift. The Nexus is the universal map of dimensions or alternate realities that exist or will exist, and I am in charge of monitoring them he said seriously. They say. Different dimensional realities what the hell are you talking about he said seriously. Drift. You see, I am a multiversal being capable of destroying entire universes with just a snap of my fingers, and my job is to ensure that everything flows as it should. A clear example is the branch, the central one in the entire universe at the same time he said seriously. They say. What's wrong with her? He said seriously. Drift. That is a timeline of yours, the brightest points are surrounded by different lines, they are the different realities that follow when making different decisions, for example there is one where you are betrayed by your entire harem, but you are the reincarnation of Yugi Mudo, an ancient pharaoh, another where you travel to a world called Pokemon. Even in one you were a creepypasta, and there are thousands of realities where you are betrayed and abandoned by the girls who decided to love you, and in some you two meet, but at different times and moments. They say. And where is ours he said curiously. Drift. Mainline third change star slope A4 has just lit up and ready said calmly watching the boys looking at a fairly long line. They say. 
because there are no stars anymore he said confused seeing that now it is a line that continues to infinity. Drift. Because the adversities are over now you will have your peaceful life he said seriously. Angel. And an all-powerful being like you can alter events he said seriously. Drift. Of course I do it all the time including this one, and you will wonder how, well it's very easy, I was the one who decided that the demon king would save you, without me you would have ended up dead, Rias and Akeno committing suicide, and everyone dead because of the great war against the cow's brigade and Atlantis he said seriously. I say. And that's why you show us this he said confused. Drift. Of course you didn't get here by chance, but don't worry your world will be fine by he said snapping his fingers. The boys looked at each other in confusion as they stared at the entrance to Issei Castle. Rias. Issei my love is back she said happily with a little baby in her arms. Issei. Hey, where did we go? He said confused. Rias. Issei, don't play dumb, they went to hunt renegades, come on, lunch is almost ready she said happily. The two boys, surprised, walked behind the girl while looking at each other strangely. Angel. You know what happened he said confused. Issei. No, I don't remember anything, just that we were walking through a forest he said weirdly. Angel. I see and how do you feel he said while examining himself. I say. I feel happy. Dot. Whoever says you can't get up after a betrayal, I say did it and came giving us a valuable lesson, he who perseveres achieves and you are ready to fight against adversity. In the distance a masked man watched everything calmly. Drift. Perfect harmony as it should be he said taking out a book where a brown haired boy and a black haired boy could still be seen hugging each other. Stop torturing yourself said a blue haired girl. Drift. I can't sleep, it's so difficult he said sadly. Sona. I know, Gustav, but we have to go back. A new Issei needs your help she said it would be. Drift. You're right, it's time to return to the Nexus. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.